On today's episode, Starship performs an amazing second test flight, Cybertrucks are spotted in showrooms as the delivery event looms, and FSD information starts showing up in Europe, Australia, and China. On November 18th, the world's largest rocket, Starship, launched from Boca Chica, Texas for its second test flight. Observers were only a little nervous, likely remembering the scale of damage from the first test flight back on April 20th, which left a huge crater in the launch pad and flung heavy chunks of concrete far into the surrounding coastline. But the SpaceX team had been hard at work since then and had installed upgrades and new equipment that seemed to easily handle the power of the Super Heavy booster and its 33 Raptor V2 engines. Over 7,700 tons of force was completely diverted by a steel plate and thousands of gallons of water. Aside from testing their new upgrades, the Starship flight needed to meet two specific goals. It needed to lift off without completely demolishing the pad again, and it needed to be able to demonstrate stage separation without exploding. And it did both of these things pretty much flawlessly, and then it exploded. After boosting to an altitude of about 70 kilometers, the rocket began its stage separation procedure, which is when the booster and the vehicle that's riding on top of it pull apart. Typically, the first stage booster simply falls away to burn up or splash into the ocean, while the second stage continues on its own engines into orbit. SpaceX, like all of Elon's companies, prefers to do things a little more dramatically. First, the company was trying out a separation technique called hot staging, which involves starting the engines of the Starship upper stage vehicle while the two parts are still connected. This allows for a smoother transition without losing momentum. Also, after separation, the enormous super heavy booster is designed to flip 180 degrees, turn its engines back on, and fly back to base, or in this case, the Gulf of Mexico for a splash landing in the ocean. Eventually, it will also land sort of like how the Falcon 9 booster does, only with some extra steps involving getting caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms because Super Heavy is much bigger than Falcon 9's booster and so can't land on legs the same way. Unfortunately, during this part of the test, the Super Heavy booster made a terrific flip, aligned properly to the target, and couldn't get all its engines to light. So, Instead of risking the gigantic vehicle flying off course, SpaceX hit the big red button and activated the flight termination system, which blew the booster into many tiny pieces. The Starship upper half of the rocket did a bit better, flying for about five more minutes above Earth's atmosphere to an altitude of 150 kilometers before another anomaly forced its FTS to activate and a second explosion marked the end of the flight test. Explosions during rocket testing are pretty much a normal hazard of the process, so while those sensational headlines snarkily joking about Elon's rocket blowing up again are technically true, this test really was an unqualified success. The rocket was able to fuel without issue, launch without breaking the surrounding facility, fly perfectly up to the correct altitude, and separate smoothly using the new technique. It was literally a perfect flight up until that point. Even NASA's SLS rocket, which took Artemis 1 into space, couldn't claim some of those things. However, realistically Starship is going to need a lot of work before it becomes usable for full missions, and of course another FAA investigation will have to happen before SpaceX can even launch another test flight, let alone help with the orbital placement of the new Starlink V2 satellites. All in all, 2024 looks like it's going to be incredibly busy for SpaceX and their giant rocket, and if you'd like to know more about this particular story, you can visit our channel The Space Race for a more in-depth explanation of what happened and what the future holds for Starship. We are just 8 days out from Tesla's Cybertruck delivery event on November 30th, and it's starting to feel like the days leading up to a holiday, right up to Tesla fans trying to find out anything they can about the new truck. Over the past few weeks, we've seen more and more information steadily leaked as the stainless steel pickup truck needed to interact with the public, or Tesla themselves had to submit specifications for paperwork, but with just a week to go, there might not be much more left to discover. 
On November 15th, a video detailing the interior of the Cybertruck was posted on TikTok, and it's very clear that Tesla did not want it out in public. It's been reported that some people have shared this video around, and who had invitations to the Cybertruck delivery event have had the invitation revoked after sharing the post. It's still unclear exactly who shot this film, but if they are Tesla employees, it's safe to say they won't be for much longer. The video itself shows a closer view of what we've seen previously, although this Cybertruck is much more finished than the earlier prototypes. The back seats are folded up to accommodate a tarp, and we get a good look at the center display, which is likely the real reason Tesla is coming down so hard on this video. On the screen, a bunch of information is displayed. Most importantly is the navigation calculations and the current battery life. The navigation shows that there are 16 miles left in the current trip, and that the computer expects the battery to be down to 65% charge by then, 6% lower than the current 71% displayed in the upper right on the screen. Some quick and clever math shows that this Cybertruck has a functional range of around 267 miles at 100% charge, so no wonder Tesla didn't want this getting out. The company has been advertising that their dual motor version would have a range of at least 300 miles, so seeing otherwise on a real world vehicle is a little worrisome. That being said, this calculation is rough, and based on the estimates of the onboard navigation computer, it's not the very well-tested EPA benchmark that will be published when the Cybertruck is officially launched, so it's not likely that the figure we're seeing in this video is correct. That doesn't stop it from panicking some pre-order holders, though. Regardless of this sort of leak, Tesla has been steadily preparing for their delivery event, with showroom models popping up all over the West Coast. One Cybertruck was seen at the Tesla store in Westfield UTC Mall in San Diego on November 19th, and another was delivered around the same time to the company's San Jose location. We've been seeing trucks loaded with pristine Cybertruck units leaving Giga Texas for the last few weeks now, and it wasn't hard to guess that they were intended as showroom models, and we've been seeing release candidates driving all over California, Texas, and even Canada as the company does some subtle marketing while testing their on- and off-road capabilities. As for the delivery event itself, the only new information this week comes to us from Tesla product design director Javier Verdura, who made a comment about the event while at a conference in Monterey, Mexico on November 7th. He said, we are going to deliver the first 10 in reference to the upcoming event. And that's not really surprising. Tesla doesn't have a habit of delivering too many vehicles during their events. 15 semis were delivered to PepsiCo in December 2022, and 30 Model Ys were delivered to new owners when Giga Berlin opened their production lines in March 2022. Given how involved Cybertruck's production is, it makes sense that we'd be seeing a number much closer to the semi here. But unfortunately, that's all we know about the Cybertruck delivery event for now. Based on previous events, we can guess that there will be a slick presentation and probably some untelevised parts of the event that we'll be hearing about afterwards, just like with the Investor Day event in March. That said, we won't have to wait long now, only eight more days till delivery day. And if you are as excited as we are to see the Cybertruck finally released, then you'll probably love this new Cyberpunk-inspired Cybertruck design we just released on the Tesla Space merch store. We've got white and black t-shirts in all sizes, plus some awesome coffee cups. Over the past few months, we've been seeing a steady rise in hints that Tesla is getting ready to release their full self-driving beta onto the streets of their other big markets, with testing vehicles being spotted in Australia and Europe back in May, and recent efforts to get China leading to a specific team being hired by Tesla to help liaise with the local government and score some testing allowances there. And while we haven't heard much more about these efforts to get FSD licensed for use in markets outside of North America, recent changes to the new user's manuals in Teslas in Europe, Australia, and China are a big hint that FSD is about to see a big expansion. On November 18th, Tesla Observer site Tesla Scope pointed out that the user manuals in these parts of the world have been quietly updated with information about the FSD program. Some commenters have correctly pointed out that UNECE countries won't be able to permit use of auto steering and navigation software like Tesla's FSD system until at least mid-2024, as regulatory bodies would need to work with the company to get the current laws changed. 
But this is work that Tesla has been doing for years now with express purpose of growing their network onto international roadways. As we said a little earlier, FSD was actually released to some limited amount of beta testers back in May this year and has been steadily running through testing ever since for the left-hand drive vehicles at least. And it's not like the local governments are particularly against the introduction of this tech either. China, at least, seems keen to get self-driving vehicles on their roads, going so far as to design a stretch of freeway specifically for Class 4 self-steering cars. It just takes more time in places other than North America, where road regulations are typically a little more stringent, but the update to the user's manuals is a pretty concrete sign that at least some of these regions are getting close to expanding their circle of FSD drivers soon, maybe as soon as the new year. Add to that the quiet improvements and updates that Tesla is rolling out to the system ahead of their massive V12 update, and we have a recipe for a very successful year for the FSD program. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please consider supporting us directly on Patreon and hit the like button. If content like this starts to perform well for us, then we can continue to make a lot more high quality videos for you in the future.